Duncan Mickle Fresh uh, will be talking about improving policy constrained kidney exchange via pre screening. So I'll hand it over to Duncan. So I'm going to be talking about an application uh, in kidney exchange. So I want to just briefly motivate what kidney exchange is. So um, kidney exchange is a process where patients in need of a donor kidney can essentially swap their donors. So if I am a, um, a my, my mother needs a kidney and I want to donate one to her, but I'm incompatible, I might pair up with her and go into an exchange where we can swap our compatible donors. And in uh, a math perspective, this is, this is a packing problem on a directed graph where each node in this graph represents an incompatible transplant or an incompatible pair between a, a donor and a, and a patient. And each edge in this directed edge in this graph corresponds to a potential transplant. Um, so we typically, uh, exchanges typically match patients and donors according to cycles and chains within this directed graph, um, where sometimes chains are initiated by non-directed donors who are just willing to give away a, a kidney and, and start a cascade of, of transplants. So the main issue that we're thinking about in this research is that in real exchanges, these planned transplants, so these edges, they can fail after we match them. Um, so as an illustration, one of the major US-based exchanges that we work with uh, found that uh, in 2019, roughly 85% of their planned transplants actually failed before going to transplantation. So this is a huge cause, a uh, real cause of inefficiency in, in real exchanges. So one way to avoid these failures, these edge failures, is through pre-screening. Uh, and in practice, pre-screening looks like this. We start out by building uh, our, our directed graph by listing all of our patients and donors. We also calculate some, some uh, value for each of the, the transplants. Uh, in the second step, we then send out uh, a request for all of, all of the recipients in this market to pre-screen potential transplants. Uh, they say, yes, I will accept or I will not accept each of these, these potential donors. And then um, edges that are rejected during the stage cannot be matched. Now, finally, we, we take our new directed graph, we match our cycles and chains, um, and then we, we hope that some of those leads to transplants. Um, so we're actually, in this work, we're working with um, the US-based exchange run by UNOS, uh, which is part of the uh, US Organ Procurement and Transplanta Transplantation Network, that's OPTN. And their, their interface they use for this pre-screening looks something like this. Um, if I am a, a recipient or a candidate hospital who can receive donors, I will log on to an online interface and I will see my, you know, my candidate at the top. And then I will see a bunch of potential donors. Uh, and this is kind of all of the potential donors who I could receive um, a kidney from who, I, who I'm medically compatible with. And this is not really ordered in any particular way. Um, so we saw in this interface uh, an opportunity to, to improve the efficiency of the market by maybe tailoring uh, which potential donors are shown to which candidates. Um, so that's essentially inserting this, this step prior to pre-screening, where we look at our original uh, donation graph, we filter and sort our, our transplants by importance to the final match run, and then we alter the interface that our recipients see um, to kind of show them transplants that are more relevant to our exchange. So I, I, we heard, uh, I heard in an earlier talk uh, a lot about interfaces so that at the applied side of things, this is an interface design problem. So I just want to motivate why it's important to choose which transplants are pre-screened. Uh, this is some work we did with UNOS, uh, some data we looked at for all of their past match runs. Um, we found by looking at historical data that less than half of, of patients and donors who are, are medically compatible with each other can actually be matched via exchange. So for example, this uh, blue line at the top here is the number of um, patient donor pairs in each exchange. And the, the yellow line at the bottom is the number who can actually be matched via exchange. So it's usually less than even a third. Uh, it's a very small fraction of, of patients who participate in exchange can actually be matched. Um, so it's it, when thinking about our pre-screening uh, for our donors, we don't want. We only want to show them transplants that actually can be matched, and it turns out that's a very small number of the the overall number of donors. Um, second, it, it, some donors are more likely or more more matchable than others, uh, and it turns out we we want to prioritize donors who are are more matchable 
uh, during pre-screening to kind of uh, guide our, our matching policy to a better outcome. So these, these are two like empirical reasons for why we, we care a lot about pre-screening. So taking, step, taking a step back to a, a computer science perspective, uh, we think about this as a multi-stage decision process. So in the, the first step of the process, we choose which edges to query or to pre-screen. We send out our requests to our, our recipients. They will decide if they, they want to accept or reject that edge or a, a list of edges. Um, and then in the next step, we rerun our matching. And this is, this is run by a fixed policy. Uh, usually we can't change kidney exchange policies very easily. That's the motivation for this work. So we run through our, our matching policy. And then finally, some of those edges will fail again uh, due to other reasons. This could be preferences, uh, the donor recipient preferences. This could be medical compatibility reasons. So we have this multi-stage decision process. And uh, the core of our research is actually analyzing this process um, mathematically, both uh, theoretically and uh, empirically. So very quickly, I want to talk about our results. Uh, that multi-stage decision process I showed in the first slide, we find to be both uh, non-submodular and non-monotonic. So meaning that uh, non-submodular, meaning that I, uh, um, there's some complementary effects in which edges I, I select to pre-screen. And that's kind of intuitive if you think about kidney exchange as a set packing problem. Uh, because some of my edges might be complementary to each other. Um, now, kind of non-intuitively, this is a non-monotonic problem, which means sometimes querying additional edges could hurt my final outcome, um, which is kind of a funny result. Uh, I encourage you to look at our paper for those, those results. However, in, in practice, we, we simulate uh, different edge query policies. Um, again, please see our paper for those, those policies. Uh, we find that essentially this problem is actually uh, effectively monotonic uh, and effectively um, submodular. So we find that um, a very simple kind of greedy policy is, is basically optimal on, on most practical problems we can, we can simulate. Um, so while in theory this problem is hard, it's kind of convenient for us that, that on real data, this, this problem turns out to be easy. Um, so some next steps we're working on, we're actually collaborating more with, with UNOS, the exchange I mentioned earlier, to deploy this uh, this kind of edge query algorithm uh, to prioritize which transplants are shown to recipients um, in this interface. Uh, so as I mentioned before, this is, there are lots of uh, areas for future work here. Uh, of course, there's interesting algorithm problems as far as um, the, the query algorithms go, and also the questions of interface design. So, um, you know, one big question is if I, if I select which transplants I prioritize for uh, my donors or my recipients. So if I show a transplant surgeon, say a prioritization score for different uh, different transplants, will that change their behavior and how they um, and how they pre-screen them? Um, so these are some pretty important questions we're we're looking forward to studying in a pilot a pilot study. Uh, I think I'll actually stop there in case there are any questions. Uh, thanks, everyone. Thanks, Duncan, for a great talk. So we have a few minutes for questions. So please drop your questions in chat or in Q&A. Um, I have a question to start off. Can you speak more about um, how like the transplant surgeon responds to these different interface designs? Uh, do you have a sense of whether your collaborators have a sense of like limited attention, how these interface mm. changes interact with that aspect? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. That's a really important question for us. Um, one issue is if I'm a, a transplant surgeon and I look into my interface, uh, there are typically tens uh, of potential donors I need to look at. Um, and pre-screening these potential donors can involve talking with families, talking with uh, other surgeons, running some medical tests. So it's, it's very resource intensive to actually run, to actually pre-screen an edge. Um, so this is a decision problem that, uh, the, that, the, that the recipients face. Um, and one, one kind of rational response for a recipient is to look at all of my, say, 30 different donors and say, yes, I accept all of them. Um, mostly because that, that they would see that as an increase in their chance of being matched. Um, but that's also bad for us as an exchange. So if I'm an exchange um, coordinator and my donors just accept, pre-accept all of the edges, that means they're deferring the, the edge failures until later. 
So when, when I actually match them, they may say, oh, I actually didn't want that, that transplant in the first place, but I really wanted to be, ma be matched. So I will accept everything. Um, so that, that there, there are many different incentive uh, issues here at play. Um, I don't know if that answers your question or not. <laughs> Uh, I see a, a question. How costly is it to pre-screen edges? Does anyone pre-screen all edges in practice? Um, yeah, that, so that's what I was sort of alluding to earlier. Um, I will answer that live. Um, yeah, so, so pre-screening usually involves medical compatibility tests, so more intensive like blood tests between the patient and donor, um, but also talking with the patient's uh, care team to see if they would practically want to receive a certain donor. So sometimes patients will say I only want a donor who's within a certain age range, say close to my age, or who has um, health parameters within their desired range. Um, so that, that comes into play for pre-screening and having those conversations is resource intensive. Um, so it is costly. I, I can't, uh, we, we don't know in practice how, how many transplants it is possible to pre-screen, but uh, we know that say uh, smaller transplant centers, for example, uh, don't have a full team who can actually pre-screen a, a whole list of potential transplants. So th these are, for many smaller hospitals, this is dealt with by, uh, say, one person. Um, so one, one of our empirical questions we're, we're going to try to study in a pilot is how many transplants, is exactly this question, how many transplants is actually feasible to pre-screen in practice? Thanks for the question. Um, I see another question. A uh, question from Hector. In Mexico, we have the problem about giving the transplant to the correct person and not the friends of politicians. Very interesting and important research. Yeah. Um, I guess I can answer that. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's, that's a tricky uh, issue that we don't think at all, at all about in this kind of research. But um, yeah, uh, that, that's certainly an issue as far as, um, especially when, as far as coercion goes. So there are lots of safeguards in place, at least in the U.S., making sure that people aren't coerced or, or paid for um, donating an organ because that is, it turns out, illegal here. 